What's going on, guys? SmartHelping.com here. We've got a free tool, a uh, free uh, kind of structure I'm going to share with you. The downloads will be in the description box below for both of these um, workbooks. And so it's something I've come across with a few different clients, and that's if you're trying to aggregate a bunch of different workbooks um, into one, and you don't want people to have access to your primary data source. Uh, so this, there's a million reasons why you would want that, but let's just look at the example. So you've got a data sheet here in Google Sheets. You're only sharing it right now. I'm, um, it's a private one just for me. Um, and let's say you're running some business or, or you're uh, you know, trying to manage this. You don't want anybody else to see this data, but you want them to be able to pull this data, value one, two, three, four, if you know it's relevant to them only. So we've got sector category here, but this could be a name identifier. You could have more than more than two identifiers right now. We just have two, and then data attached to each one. So you could have this a million different ways. But Google Sheets has a really nice query function to use this, and um, you don't actually have to hold the data in an accessible sheet. So you can keep this hidden, but you can still allow people to access certain information based on if they're if they type in um, a given uh, unique ID or, or two unique IDs. Uh, so let's look at, so this is your locked data sheet. This is a completely different workbook here. You see just the two tabs. And so I have, and these sector and categories are drop downs based on the list here, but they might not be if you don't want anybody to know obviously what they might be able to type in you wouldn't want to show all of your sector and categories or you wouldn't want to show all your unique ids this could be like branch manager passwords or whatever the case may be um then you would not have this and you just tell them what their their ids are and then they would put it in here um and it'd be unique to each user but you could see here we've got this query uh function with import range and so the query function kind of builds a database. It, it basically knows, okay, query this range, A2 to F. So it's going to look at A2 to F. And with Google Sheets, that just means it's going to go down to unlimited rows, as much data as there are. And it's going to build, it's going to hold this database in its query function. And so it's got that. This is the identifier of the workbook here. So the, the code is just query bracket or parenthesis, import range parenthesis, um, or uh, the the uh, bracket and parenthesis. You've got your Google Sheet ID here. You don't have to type in the whole URL, and then you just got the sheet name of the workbook you're querying, and then its coordinates. Then parenthesis close bracket. Uh, and then now we're going to select. So this is the interesting part. It took me a while to figure this out, but Google Sheets has a really nice uh, column select. So for matching, it's a little bit more, it, it's once you know how it works, it's easier to use than filter. Um, so the, the code is simply, you're going to select all the columns that you want to be displayed starting in this column and over so I could I'm saying within this query of a2 to F so column a would be column 1 column B would be column 2 and so on to F so I'm saying I want this to display column 3 4 5 and 6 so you can see column 3 4 5 and 6 so it would be these four and I want to only display column data in columns 3 4 5 and 6 if the rows so you see where, and then, so here's the next um, bit of code with the query function. You put in where column one contains. Then you've got um, some code here, but this is this is referencing C2. And then you're also going to say, so, so it's going to pull all of this data if column one, what's in here, equals what you've got in this cell. And then, and column two, contains C3. So it's also, so it's got to match both. So if you have a sector that's the same, but the category could be different, 
for example, I think I did it on this one. So yeah, this is this is this one and this one are the same. But one is blue, one secondary secondary descriptor is blue, the other one is red. So if you look here, if I do the S four SF four five one you've got here, if I go red, it's this. If you look up blue, it now changes to that one. Which you can see matches the blue one. 405, 250, Tim under. 405, 250, Tim under. If I change it to red, automatically changes. So this can be very useful. There's a whole bunch of different use cases, but that's normally I always use the filter function when I'm working with any kind of data, but this really lends itself to the query function. If you don't want like your summary workbook or whatever workbook you're showing data, you're querying to, you don't want to actually hold the raw data in there. You just want to reference the primary data sheet. So you can see this becomes useful when you have one data sheet and say 50 different workbooks and all you, you want to query the same information, but just with different, um, uh, different identifiers here then you can do that with this this code. And so it's very useful. You can scale it down or up if you only want to you know, select one column and, and only if column one contains this. You don't want to go multiple or you could actually expand it and say if it matches, you know, if, if column A, it doesn't have to be in order either. You could say, well, if column three, five, and one matches whatever's in B, or whatever's in B matches this and return, you know, columns three, five, and one. Um, it doesn't have to be in any order, which is also nice uh, as long as you're referencing the whole whole um, range of cells in the in the initial function. So super helpful. Um, and you can see here if we have if you if uh, the category and sector match, let's say there's multiple multiple uh, sectors that are named this and are blue, it'll return multiple here. Um, so it just depends on your data, but it's a nice, nice thing. It took me a really long time to get through this and figure out what's what. So I figured I'd share it for free. Um, it's useful and you know, there you go. So that's, this is the main thing. All you really need is this code and then you just can simply reference. And now you have a, a primary source workbook that can be protected. And then you've got these secondary sheets and if you're on this like I don't I can uh, sign out of my account go to this workbook and it will still be able to have access to this data and it but I can't it, no matter you know I can't get onto this data sheet even though you see this workbook reference here it doesn't matter um, the query function will allow as long as this workbook has access to this it will allow you to pull data from it but if if this actual workbook is shared with only a couple emails or some or certain people, only those people will be able to actually get into the sheet. Um, and everybody else can just, they can see the formula and the code, but they can't actually get into the, the data. So that is a very, you know, with all the people that use Google Sheets, this is a very, uh, very useful function. And this is the most, one of the more diverse one, or, or flexible ones where you can query different columns with different identifiers. And it's really useful. All right, well, that's all I got. If you want to purchase uh, some of my models, I do sell financial models at smarthelping.com. I do, I've got some Google Sheet based ones. I've got a lot of industry specific models. Um, for example, premium build, pawn shop, lending as a service, recycling, hair salon, gym, fitness, used color dealership, kiosks, I and mean, all kinds of different things. I've dove into different um, revenue logics. They all have different revenue logics, um, and they go out between you know three, five, ten, sometimes twenty years, and um, are really good uh, forecasting tools, budgeting tools, um, tools that you might use to try and demonstrate how you plan to get to a certain revenue mark over time, uh, cash flow planning, all of that stuff. Um, so you can take your pick here. Uh, also, a fair amount of real estate modeling with joint venture um, bills included. Uh, all right. Well, that's all I got for you. Have a great one, and I'll see you on the next one.